For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson, and that about wraps it up for winter. No, not the return of spring in the Northern Hemisphere, at least not directly. The fact that as soon as the snow melts here, we start hearing that it's never coming back, or it's not like it used to be, or it'll soon vanish in 80 years. And sure enough, on cue, NBC declared that, quote, six-month summers could be common by the end of this century, scientists say, end quote. So our response is, as you may have guessed, no, not how come warmth is climate and cold is just weather, or yeah, who are these scientists who say? It's, you've been hitting the RCP 8.5 again, haven't you? And of course they have. RCP 8.5, you'll recall, is one of a series of projections for growth of greenhouse gases and temperature. But this one is known to be a worse-than-worst-case scenario, an impossible red line that if any model result comes near it, you know you muffed the programming. And what's crucial here is the known-to-be part. Of course, it's possible that the journalists didn't know. The story in question doesn't mention RCP 8.5 directly, and the author, science reporter Denise Chow, has an MA in journalism and a BA in criminology. Which, once again, leads us to mention the inconsistency of that you're not a climate scientist jibe whenever laypersons have views on climate that disagree with the orthodoxy. But the scientists who say in this case, in geophysical research letters, certainly are aware that RCP 8.5 is no good. And it's a bit silly that I can tell just by reading a news headline that this absurd scenario will lurk somewhere in the fine print. Partly because one of my rules for public debate is, if people think you're a clown, don't show up in a fright wig. But it also increases the temptation to lapse into the language of hoax and fraud. But I resist it, on the firm ground here, that if they really were trying to scam us, they wouldn't do it in this dumb and obvious way. Look, RCP 8.5 is busted, and they know it, and so do we. So when people use it, they're basically putting on a fool's cap in the lab and then wandering out into the street going, the world is about to end, without any of their colleagues going, say, that might make you look silly. And that kind of behavior is the mark of zealotry, not conspiracy. There's lots more in the newsletter, as always, including this claim that fungi emit more CO2 than people, a lot more. But, of course, climate change is unleashing the fungi, so it's all our fault, and we're all going to... Not that they have one-track minds or anything. But apparently along the way, climate change might make hitherto rare mammal fungal diseases common. Or just possibly release huge clouds of mental pollution. The newsletter also has a story, which even made the Atlantic Salmon Federation newsletter, so this was a big one apparently, saying that the Atlantic Ocean Conveyor Belt, also known as the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, is slowing down due to global warming. And of course, because it's due to global warming, it's bad. Uh, mind you, according to the story, the AMOC drives the Gulf Stream, which keeps Europe relatively mild, so this is another one of these cases of warming causing cooling. And that's odd because every other story about climate change in Europe says Europe is warming and it's bad. But this one says climate change is going to cool Europe and it's bad. It's worth noting that another study of the AMOC that came out a week earlier and used direct measurements, not proxies, said no, the AMOC isn't slowing down at all. But the scary story had a better press release, or at least a scarier one, so it hit the big time. Now, the newsletter also notes, in context of a New York Times debate on whether or not to cancel student debt, a very modern debate in that both parties said yes, one of the participants did allow that, quote, if I were Biden and had over a trillion to spend on any of my agenda items, I'd spend it on climate change, end quote. All of it? Can't anybody think of any other problem or recognize the existence of trade-offs? Well, no. Including Biden himself, who turned out to have, or think he had, way more than a trillion dollars to spend and spent it on everything, but it turned out everything was about climate, because everything always is nowadays, as a host of independent creative minds assure us in unison, over and over and over again. Fortunately, though, we are saved, and without breaking a sweat. See, the Russian government has this big plan to sell big carbon credits backed by its big forests. And apparently this will put a massive dent in global warming without, and here's the marvelous bit, anyone having to do anything differently. Man, that was easy.
or just maybe there's no problem to solve. See, according to Roy Spencer's careful look at the satellite data, the latest, quote, global average lower tropospheric temperature, LT, anomaly for March 2021 was negative 0.01 degrees Celsius, down substantially, end quote, from February, and in fact, cooler than it had been in March 1988. Now, as always, we're a bit suspicious of that decimal place, or worse, the two of them here. But the thing is, if you believe the satellite data, you have to believe it even when it doesn't say what you wanted it to. Now, according to Spencer, the overall trend remains plus 0.14 degrees Celsius per decade, which means warming, yes, but gentle, non-threatening, and non-accelerating warming. So again, if you believe the satellite data, that's what it's telling us. And the temperature is unstable, even though CO2 keeps going up. The newsletter also returns to our scientist safe feature with a claim that, quote, Today's fires tend to be larger and more severe. Today's conditions confront us with the likelihood of more rapid, extensive ecological changes before, beyond any we have experienced in the past, end quote. Ooh, climate change gotcha? Well, no. Because that's actually from a report on U.S. wildland fire management that was published 20 years ago and pointed the finger bone of blame, not at CO2, but at bad forest management. That's what scientists say. As they also say, via CO2 science, that as phytoplankton play a key role in ocean ecosystems, it would be good to know how they respond to, quote, so-called ocean acidification, end quote. And a new study says they don't seem to give a hoot about it. Or, if you prefer, quote, coastal Arctic and subarctic phytoplankton assemblages employ efficient mechanisms to compensate for the effects of differences in CO2 availability, end quote. And again, via CO2 science, more CO2 helps winter wheat cope with, quote, low temperature stress during the early seedling stage, end quote. Apparently, they end up with more granulomelae and osmophilic lipid droplets in the chloroplast. And these are evidently good things if you're wheat which means they're also good things if you eat the stuff. So, if you're in favor of wheat, against forest fires, and resistant to high doses of RCP 8.5, please subscribe to our newsletter, share it, join us on YouTube and Rumble, and no, wait, I know you click off when this bit starts, but we do need your support, and we need your money. Okay, you can go now. This is just the bit where I say, for the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson, which I am.